Hello, everyone, and welcome to Autumn Renewal Cozy Wellness. So today I am prepared with my journal. I have my sparkly notebook. <laughs> I have something to write with. And I have a little pot of oolong tea. I have some candles in the background, some plants around. This is all about cozy wellness. So welcome to Autumn. I am going to start sharing my screen. My slides going here. There we go. And let me see. So welcome, welcome. Okay. I usually like to start with a quote, but today I'm going to read you a passage from Anne of Green Gables because I think it's a beautiful passage about autumn. So just to set the tone for today. <clears throat> October was a beautiful month at Green Gables when the birches in the hollow, <laughs> I'm sorry, technical difficulties, turned as golden as sunshine and the maples behind the orchard were royal crimson and the wild cherry trees along the lane put on the loveliest shades of dark red and bronzy green while the fields sunned themselves in aftermaths. Anne reveled in the world of color about her. Oh, Marilla, she exclaimed one Saturday morning, coming dancing in with her arms full of gorgeous boughs. I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. It would be terrible if we just skipped from September to November, wouldn't it? Look at these maple branches. Don't they give you a thrill? Several thrills? I'm going to decorate my room with them. So that is from Anne of Green Gables, one of my favorite books as a child. So welcome to Autumn Renewal Cozy Wellness. Today's itinerary is going to be in four parts. We're going to do some mindful breathing, we're going to do a couple of journaling exercises. Then I'm going to give you 10 tips for cozy wellness in autumn. And the last part with the remaining time, we're gonna do some fourth quarter planning. Cause I had a friend tell me um, the other day, it has been such a terrible year that 2023 was a terrible year. And I said, well, there's three months left of the year. It's not over yet. So let's do something about it, right? So that was the inspiration for the fourth quarter planning. So <clears throat> I have my long tea, I'm gonna take a sip. <clears throat> We're going to take five minutes. Oh, first of all, let me, if you don't know me, let me tell you who I am. <laughs> so my name is Donna DeRosa. I'm the author of the big book of Mediterranean diet cooking, also the flexitarian cook for, cookbook for beginners and a year of graceful living. I am a former automotive journalist and managing editor, and now I'm a lifestyle and wellness coach who specializes in Mediterranean living. I have two websites, DonnaDeRosa.com, where I write about lifestyle and wellness, and MostlyMediterranean.com, where I share recipes. And I also have a YouTube channel where you can see all of this in action. And uh, after we're done here today, I'm going to put the replay up on YouTube and it's also on my website. So <clears throat> let's begin. <clears throat> so for mindful breathing, we're going to take five minutes to center ourselves. And I would like to ask you to turn off your phones or any distractions and allow yourself to fully commit to this hour of cozy wellness. I made sure I wore a nice cozy top. So get cozy, have some, you know, have your journal, have a notebook or something if you want to participate in the journaling exercises. Autumn is the season when we start bringing out our sweaters. We light scented candles. I have some lit behind me over here. Um, <clears throat> we make comforting soups. We enjoy hot beverages like cocos and spice lattes, some hot cider. Maybe some oolong tea. Mm. The season is all about coziness. So make yourself comfortable. I'm going to put on some soothing music and we're going to breathe slowly and deeply to get into the mindset of wellness. So let me find, see if I can pull up my music. I'm going to set a five minute timer on my phone. So you don't have to count to a number of breaths or beats, just breathe at your own pace. Try to slow down your breath a little and feel centered. Now close your eyes and we'll just breathe together. So deep breath in. When you're ready, just let it out. And just give yourself a moment of peace before we begin. Get into the mindset of this presentation. 
Cozy Wellness. There we go. <laughs> I find that very helpful. I do that every day now before I start to journal or before I get into work is that we have a hard time. We have so much stimulus coming at us all the time. And sometimes when we want to just take some time for ourselves, it gets hard to settle down. So I like to do that for five minutes and just get me in the mindset 
of whatever I'm going to do next. <clears throat> so, um, I'm going to take another sip of this delicious raw tea. So now I have some journaling exercises for you. <clears throat> so journaling number one, so I have two journal prompts prepared for you today. So I'm going to put on some beautiful music and we're going to write for five minutes on each prompt. And I'll leave the prompt up on the screen so you can refer back to it if you need to. So for the first one, this time of year, the trees release their leaves. They can spend less energy in the winter and prepare themselves for rebirth in the spring. So taking inspiration from nature, what can you let go of to prepare yourself for the end of the year? So maybe you wanna let go of some anger or worries. Maybe you want to declutter your home and let go of things that no longer serve you. Maybe you want to release some unwanted pounds or maybe you want to get a haircut. I know I do. <laughs> I wanna release some of my hair. <laughs> Only you can answer this question. I want you to take it as deep as you want to. So, you know, I'm, I have my little journal here. So I'm going to do this right along with you. So you see the journal prompt on the screen, hopefully, and I'm going to set a five minute timer again. And okay, just begin. So just think about that question, taking inspiration from nature, what can you let go of to prepare yourself for the end of the year? I'll let you know when time is up. So just, I'm doing it right along with you here. I'm just writing right alongside you.
One minute left. Okay, how did that feel? <laughs> I'm gonna take another sip of tea and we'll get to journaling prompt number two. And then we'll get into our slides. <clears throat> so number two. Every season gives us a chance to begin again. So let's make the most of it. I feel, especially in autumn, the world around us changes so dramatically. The trees give, a, give us one last burst of color before winter sets in. For our second journaling prompt, think about how you can make this season more meaningful and fun. So what can you do to make this season of autumn more meaningful and fun? I'm going to set the timer again for five minutes. So just let's think about that. What kind of autumn activities are happening in your area that you can take advantage of? How can you make this season more meaningful and fun? Let's go.
One minute left. Okay, <laughs> our journaling session is complete. So I hope you enjoyed the opportunity to gain clarity with some of these journaling prompts. So let's move into our wellness tips. So this is the fun part of the present, well, it's all fun, but this is the most fun of the presentation. <laughs> so my first tip for cozy wellness is to find cozy ways to relax. Autumn is the season of sweaters, I have my comfy sweater on today, my little velour sweater. I like to cuddle up under a blanket and surround myself with soft pillows while I watch TV or read a book. I like to wear my plush robe at night. Um, during the day, I like to wrap up in colorful scarves. Find ways to make your home more cozy and enjoy the comfort of being home. So surround yourself with nice soft things Maybe light a few candles like I did back here in the evening and just make your season, make, make your home cozy in the season of autumn. So tip number two is to create an evening routine for yourself. I like to find ways to wind down at the end of the day. After dinner, I like to have you know, a cup of tea or maybe some cocoa in the winter. Mm. Before bed, I find it really beneficial to do a little bit of a stretching routine. Uh, it just helps my body relax when I go to lie down. I have my skincare routine that I do in the evening. Sometimes I do a special facial mask. Uh, some nights, if I'm feeling stressed, I'll do a pre-bed meditation if I'm having trouble shed shutting off my brain for the evening. Uh, and lately, I've gotten to the ha habit of journaling a few minutes before bed. So that's why I had us do some journaling exercises. I always used to um, just kind of blow off journaling. Like I know that a lot of people do it, but once I started doing it for myself and only doing it for about five minutes, so it's not too long, I find it really beneficial. Or um, think of ways that you can relax in the evening and make it a ritual for yourself. You know, my skincare every night is a ritual. I go in, I wash my face, I do my little routine, and it just is something that signals for me that, you know, I'm getting time, it's going to be time to shut down. So Create a little routine for yourself in the evening and allow it to help you release the day. Tip number three, now, because I am the Mediterranean diet girl, is to explore seasonal produce. So Mother Nature provides us with the exact foods we need each season. So in the summertime, you know, we have uh, uh, moisturizing uh, fruits that we eat, and things like watermelon stuff, because you know we get dehydrated, so it's hydrating uh, kinds of foods that we eat. And in the winter, we have root vegetables and things that get us through the dark times of the year and help us keep full and satisfied. So you know, hearty vegetables like butternut squash, acorn squash, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, beets, turnips, rutabagas, carrots, they're all the things that are in season right now. And also fruits like ap apples, pears, cranberries, and citrus fruits. So explore your seasonal produce. Maybe you can find a farmer's market in your area where you can see what is growing at this time of year. Tip number four is to make a pot of homemade soup. So all those vegetables that I mentioned up above can be used to make a soup. Soup is really easy to make at home. There's nothing like a hot bowl of soup that you made yourself. Use foods from the list above, make a hearty vegetable soup. And I'll send you some recipes in the email with the replay link that I send out. And if you have my cookbook, there's an entire chapter in here on soup. So make a pot of homemade soup. It's so easy. I think people are afraid to make homemade soup. They think it's like an all day process, but it's really not. Tip number five 
<laughs> Tip number five is to bake a pie. So with some of the fruits that I mentioned above, the fruits that are in season, try making a pie at home. I don't usually make my own pie crust. I usually buy a store-bought pie crust, but then it's really easy to just make something out of the fruits that are in season. So you can use one fruit like apple, make an apple pie, or you can combine fruits. Like sometimes mixing things like pears and berries together can make a really nice pie. So I have a really simple rustic pie recipe on my website and in my cookbook also that doesn't use too much sugar. And also in the replay, I will include a link to that in the email that I send out after this presentation. So tip number six is to take a nature walk. Walk around your neighborhood or go to your local park and just look at the colorful leaves. All the leaves are starting to change right now. I'm starting to see, there's still a lot of green around, but I'm starting to see some yellow and golds and some reds. Certain trees start to change really early and then we kind of get into a season where it's full blown because I'm on the East Coast. Um, just take a nature walk, go to the park and maybe listen to the breeze going through the trees and then just enjoy the sights and sounds of the season, the smells of the season that are around you. Because there's nothing like walking through the park and crunching through some autumn leaves that have fallen to the ground. They have that certain particular smell. If I could capture it in a candle, I would. <laughs> so I like to go to the park a lot and I like to take a cinnamon latte with me and I just take a leisurely walk. Like I'm not really doing like an exercise walk. I'm just enjoying the time to be in nature. So the next tip is to explore your local area. We have a farm near us where you can go, you can take a hayride to go apple picking <laughs> and they have a corn maze. Uh, maybe take a drive someplace it, to see the leaves. I know that not everyone lives where there's a lot of nature around, or maybe if you're on the West Coast, I used to live in California and there wasn't a lot of seasonal change, but still certain things would change colors. And it was just nice to get out and do that. And maybe if you, you have to take a drive somewhere just to get someplace a little more rural so you can see some of this stuff. So just do something fallish, check out your local farm or your park and see if there are any events available for you. Maybe there's an autumn concert going on or an autumn picnic or, or some kind of art festival or something where people are doing something. They do a lot of things in our local park. Um, so just like look at your calendar of events for your local area and see if there's something autumnish that you can do for yourself. <clears throat> Tip number eight is to enjoy a candlelit evening. As you can see, I like to light candles. I make candles myself. <laughs> Uh, it's really easy to make candles. The glow of candlelight is romantic and it's cozy. And if you have dinner by candlelight, uh, that can be really romantic. But make sure you choose unscented candles so it doesn't clash with your food. Um, but also in the evening, I like to light up a, a scented candle in a fall scent. Um, you cozy up under an evening, you know, under a blanket in the evening, light your candle, maybe grab a book and a warm drink and just enjoy the candlelit romantic atmosphere that it creates. So tip number nine is to do something crafty. Like maybe you can make your own candle. Uh, when I first learned how to make candles, I was surprised at how easy it was. And it really doesn't take even that much time or even a lot of really expensive ingredients. Um, so maybe you can also create your own autumn decorations, like a wreath that you want to hang on your door or something fun for Halloween. Or have you ever tried creating a simmer pot? They smell so amazing. So you just put a little bit of water in a pot and maybe some a cinnamon stick or two, or maybe a few orange slices, or even some apple slices, or maybe some cloves, or uh, maybe a sprig of rosemary or a sprig of thyme, and just let it slowly simmer on the stove. And it just, you know, don't forget about it, of course, <laughs> but just let it slowly simmer, and it just creates a beautiful scent. It's like, it's like baking a pie. You, you know, your house fills with that wonderful scent, and everyone's wondering what's going on and getting happy. <laughs> so for my final tip, is to make plans for the last quarter of the year. And this is my little segue into our last section. So like I said, we have three months left of 2023. So let's do something great with it. So for our fourth quarter planning, I have my little sparkly notebook here. So get you might wanna get something that you can write on. We're gonna just make some lists of things. So this is gonna be an easy section. This isn't as uh, deep thought as the journaling process. So find yourself a nice blank page and a pen and we are going to do some fourth quarter planning. So I'd like to go through three areas that we'll be looking at. So we're going to make some personal goals for the rest of the year, maybe some professional goals, some creative goals, and some health and wellness goals. So let's start with our personal life goals. 
So an example of this would be uh, spending more time with your family. So I want you to, in, in your notebook, write down a list of things that you want to accomplish in your personal life before the end of the year. So maybe you want to spend more time with your kids or your partner, or maybe you want to find a partner, or maybe you would like to find a group of friends. You know, it, sometimes it's hard to maintain friendships as we get older, and sometimes you just need to seek out some friendships in your area. Or maybe you just want to improve your relationships with people, or maybe you want to reach out to friends you haven't spoken to in a while, or maybe you even want to adopt a pet. So these are anything that is just in your personal life. It doesn't have anything to do with work. It's just you personally and your connection to the world. So let's just take two minutes and I'll let you know when we're done. So just grab your pen and just start making a list. Just put it on the heading, personal goals. And just start making a list of things that you would like to do. So take a sip of tea and start writing. Try to come up with about, you know, at least five things that you're going to do. Okay, let's move on to our second one. So let's take a moment to think about our professional goals. So this could involve your job or your business or any kind of work that you do, even that you don't get paid for, like child rearing or caregiving. You know, parenting is work, caregiving is work. So don't leave these things out. So when I talk about professional goals and work, it's not just the things that you get paid for. So it could be your job, it could be your career, it could be um, maybe you have your own business or you want to start your own business. So just think about all the things that you do that you would consider work. So let's make some work goals, professional goals. We're just going to take about two minutes. And again, we're just making lists. So try to come up with three to five things that you want to work on.
Okay. I feel like I could go on forever on that one. I came up with eight things just out of my head. I'm kind of a workaholic. <laughs> so uh, just to share with you some of the things that I wrote down, I'm working on a new book and I keep taking forever with it. And uh, so I, I wrote down, like, just write that book, just get that book done. You know, one of the things I also want to do is redesign my website. So they're the kind of things that I wrote down. Um, you don't have to share what you wrote down unless you want to. Um, but uh, just to give you an example. So let's move on to our third part, which is our creative goals. So <clears throat> maybe you want to redecorate your house or maybe take up painting, take a, an art class in some way or learn a new craft or write a book or start a YouTube channel, which I, I have also. Uh, I'm a firm believer that we need some kind of creative outfit in our, some kind of creative activity in our lives, uh, just for our mental well-being. I love being creative, and I don't feel like um, that anybody isn't creative. I know some people think they're, you know, I have more analytical mind, and I felt like um, maybe I didn't really know how to uh, be creative, but once you start exercising that creative urge in you, you realize that you are creative, everyone's naturally creative, and that it gets easier and easier the more you practice it. So let's take a couple of minutes. I need a new page here. And let's write down some of our creative goals for the last three months of the year. And we'll just take again, two minutes. Okay, so let's move on to our fourth one, which is our health and wellness goals. So maybe you want to eat more vegetables, or lose weight, or start walking more, or start a meditation practice, or maybe even you want to read more books or take a class to improve your mind. So take a couple of minutes to list the ways that you can improve the health of your body and your mind over the next three months. So think of it in terms of self care um for your body so let's take two minutes and write out our health and wellness goals so health and wellness are two different things you know i consider health um the things that we eat the things that we do with our body and i consider wellness the things that we do for our our mind and our spirit so let's make some lists of things that we would like to work on in the next three months
Okay. So that's it for our list making. Now, now that you have your, <coughs> excuse me, now that you have your list in your four areas, I'm going to give you some homework. <laughs> so your homework is to get really specific about how you're going to achieve these goals. So we made a list of things that are general. Like one of the things I wrote down uh, was to, to stand up more. Well, I have an app on my phone called Stand Up that I use, and I set it for a certain amount of time. I set it once an hour, and it gives me a little ping, and it reminds me, because I work at home, I sit a lot. I'm always in front of my computer. It reminds me to stand up and just walk around. But I've added little notes to that thing that say, stand up and do five push-ups. You know, you can add little reminders for yourself. So think about things that you can very specifically do and then put them on your calendar. So if you want to improve your relationship with your significant other, for example, carve out time to have a date night and then actually put it on your calendar. Make it real. Make it a real thing that you're going to do instead of just writing down that this is what you want to do. If you want to spend more time with friends, you know, pick a date and make it happen. Maybe you can find a time where you're going to go to a movie or maybe even just meet for a cup of coffee. Just make the time. Maybe if you want to get a promotion at work, you know, come up with some new ideas or volunteer for new projects. Be seen and add value. That's how you get promoted. Or if you want to be more creative, maybe go out and actually buy a paint set or maybe some colored pencils. So take action on these and just get started on these things and see where it takes you. So if you want to improve your health, like I said, go look out for a local farm market and buy some seasonal vegetables. Maybe cook dinner regularly or join a gym or make plans to take a walk with a friend every Saturday or something like that. So making plans can be fun. And, you know, if you you won't get any results unless you take some action. So make plans for the last quarter of the year. So I wanted to share with you the ways that if you do want to set your goals, I am a life coach, that you can work with me. So these are my coaching programs that I wanted to just show you for a second. So I have a private personal coaching program that is a package that you can buy that is four weekly one hour sessions and they're live via Zoom like this, but just with you and me. Or I have YouTube coaching. A lot of people that I work with want to start YouTube channels. They have businesses and they want to um, you know, showcase their, their work. So that is a, a six weekly one hour live sessions on Zoom. And that's where we build your YouTube channel. Or if you don't want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I have some courses that I've done in the past that I have now have recordings of. So for example, I have my Body Mind Detox course, which was sort of a weight loss, but also a wellness course. And it was it had a lot more to it than just learning how to eat, but it's all about the Mediterranean diet and adding different lifestyle elements to uh, you know, healthy lifestyle elements to your life. And that is a four week video course that you can just do on your own time. So if you're interested in any of these things, for the personal life coaching option, go to donadroza.com forward slash forward slash coaching. Or if you're interested in the body mind detox, it's donadroza.com forward slash body mind detox. So that is all I have for you today. I really want to thank you for joining, joining me today and spending all this time with me. Um, we're about 50 minutes into the program. And normally when I do these, I just do the slide presentation and we're done in about 20 minutes. But I just wanted to expand it and uh just make it a little more fun and a little more cozy for the season. So if you have any questions, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And look in, oops, and look into the chat. So if you don't have any questions, um, if you're watching this on the replay and you have questions, you can always email me. Uh, the the email that comes out with the replay link on it, you can just reply to that and that will come directly to me. My email address is dderosa at donnaderosa.com. So if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello or let me know if you enjoyed this presentation or if you have any ideas for things that you would like me to discuss in the future, I would love to hear from you. I answer all of my emails personally. Um, so uh, always feel free. Don't hesitate at all to write to me if you have any questions. So if we don't have any questions, then that is all we are going to do for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you find lots of cozy ways to enjoy the autumn months. And I hope you really get on track with all of your goals for the last three months of the year. And uh, I guess that's it. I will, uh, I will see you next time. So thank you so much and bye.